Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, your host, and today we are welcoming on incumbent counselor for Ward 13 here in the city of Calgary and currently running for re-election, counselor Diane Colley Urquhart. Diane, greatly appreciate it for being here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm looking forward to our chat today. And uh, with your permission, I just wanted to read the land acknowledgement. And the reason that that's so important to our community is because there is the first National Truth and Reconciliation Day uh, in a couple of days on the 30th. So with, with your indulgence, I would like to uh, read the acknowledgement, if I may. Whenever you're ready, Councillor, go ahead. So I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Blackfoot. And this includes the Bear's Paw, the Chiniki, the Kainai First Nations, the Pikani, the Siksika, the Stony Nakoda, the Sutina First Nation, and the Wesley First Nation. And the city of Calgary is also the traditional homeland of the historic Northwest Métis, and it is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Thank you so much, Councillor, for doing that. As, a, as I've said uh, previously on the show, I, I, I'm always uh, uh, grateful when uh, guests do that, so I appreciate you doing that, and one of the first candidates who were running in this election to have been on the show to do that, so thank you so much. Um, now let's get into the interview the fun part of the, the show that I like. Um, as anyone who's watched this show or listened to this podcast, they know that the first question out of the gate, and you are no exception, Councillor Urquhart, is where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Yeah, so uh, this, this is uh, an important question to me. Um, when I was reflecting on, you know, whether I was going to uh, to run for re-election again. I was reflecting back on my years of public service, and uh, you know, as a as a as a young child of the the of two daughters to a farmer living in southern Alberta, um, I remember when I first went into nursing and and. Uh, and uh, didn't have a lot of money. Uh, Dad had to haul wheat for 25 cents a bushel to pay for me to go through nursing uh, at the Foothills Hospital and the University of Calgary. And so um, it was at a very early age, uh, you know, trying to survive on the farm and making ends meet and helping other people and, uh, you know, getting together for, uh, for different gatherings on the farm with neighbors and doing things together. So it started out very early. Um, but, you know, here I am today, and uh, I've had 51 years of public service as a registered nurse. And so that, uh, that nursing career uh, has been one of public service and one that I'm very proud of. I, um, um, you know, I ran the trauma unit at Foothills uh, and the cardiology unit there. Uh, I taught at the, uh, uh, at the nurses and orientated them uh, at the Foothills. Um, was charge nurse uh, at the University of uh, Alberta in, in the emergency room. And actually, when I think back on it with COVID and how severe this, this uh, epidemic has been, I actually looked after one of the last polio patients there that was in the iron lung. And so, um, yeah, and, uh, and so, you know, you build this sense of, of honor, of duty, of compassion for others. And and trying to make their life better. And so it's pretty, it becomes a pretty inherent part of who you are and how you become defined. Um, and then I was fortunate to be married to my husband. Uh, David passed away in 2012, but we were together for 40 years. That took me to uh, Wichita, Kansas, um, and uh, started out uh, down there working on President Reagan's uh, Republican primary campaign, which was really an interesting thing, got me involved and interested in politics, actually. And so I finished my degree in health and human services down there. Then I spent 15 years in the not-for-profit sector uh, as the CEO of the Cancer Society for Alberta Northwest Territories. Uh, so again, you're dealing with volunteers, you're working with volunteers, you're volunteering yourself, if, if I may say so myself. So, um, and then I ran several uh, provincial and federal elections. I was um, Prime Minister Harper's riding president uh, when he was uh, in office. 
Uh, and so, uh, you know, that sort of spawned this whole interest in politics. And, and it was a natural fit for me uh, to, uh, to continue on in my public service. So as a volunteer, as a registered nurse, and, uh, and then having the honor uh, of being elected in Ward 13 uh, for, um, for seven elections, I believe, acclaimed twice um and uh served for 21 years the people of ward 13 and and in that role you also serve as a city official to look over the best interests of the city of calgary now we have a lot to unpack during our time together today but i want to continue on you for a few minutes if you uh if you will indulge me um counselor i, I gotta ask the question why in 2021 did you decide that you needed to stand for re-election? We are seeing a big change at City Hall right now. There's a lot of incumbents retiring, a lot of incumbents going off federally, as uh, your colleague, Mr. Chahal, has just done. Why did you think it was uh, appropriate for you to stay on during this sort of a transition period for the city that is going to be going through right now? So the last five years have been really a challenge in Calgary. The, um, the economic recession started in 2015 and, um, and, 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 and things just, we, we kept thinking it was only going to be for a year, then it was going to just be for two years. And, uh, you know, then, then we started to see um, the impact on the downtown core, still believing that this was only going to last two or three years. And uh, here we are five years later, you know, with the bottom dropping out of, uh, of, of, of the price of oil uh, and, and how that has sustained our economy in Calgary. Um, and so uh, that had a huge impact on the downtown core. And, you know, there we sit today with um, what nearly a 30% vacancy rate in the core. And so um, this has been you know, I don't want to overstate it. Uh, I'm a nurse. We don't overstate things. We try to keep things steady. But um, I would say to you that um, that um, this has been a crisis to manage for these years. And um, and then just when we thought we could start to recover after the four years is when the pandemic hit. And um, my service as a healthcare professional and counsel. Um, has really come in to, uh, to really benefit me to contribute in a significant way. Um, so we're in the pandemic now for 19 months. And so Calgary has been in a pretty dark place uh, with people losing their jobs even before COVID hit. And um, when, you, when you look at all that and you think, well, you know, what, a, what experience can I bring to the table? Uh, we've cut nearly a billion dollars out of the operating budget um, to, um, to, 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 to stay within our means, to eat what we kill, if you will. Um, the city is not allowed to run operating deficits. So we've had to balance the books every single year. Um, and then, you know, when you look at, you know, the, the whole issue of, uh, of property tax and how it's based on market value assessment. And when you go through a period like this, um, where you have uh, falling uh, property values, where you have the vacancy in the core, when you have a commercial property that seven years ago sold for 400 million and now it's selling for 900 million. And you have a huge problem now with business tax. And uh, business has always carried, business tax has always carried residential tax to keep residential tax low. So, um, you know, this, you have to know what you're doing at, at City Hall now more than ever, I would say. And so when I was looking at all this and, 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 and my experience and my desire to, to really want to help people and help us pull out of this thing. And here we are in the fourth wave. Um, and, and when I look at my colleagues that are in the hospital um, and with us not having enough ICU beds, this, this really hits home with me. And I, and I am known to speak out and to have a strong voice for, my, for the residents of Calgary. And so um, it was, it was um, I didn't give it a second thought actually, Chris. 
when, when I thought, no, I'm going to do this. And guess what? I was the first in line on January 4th at 8.30 with our only child, Bruce, uh, when I filed my papers uh, to serve the citizens again of Ward 13. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, rolling up my sleeves and, um, and really being support to all the new colleagues. Uh, there may be seven, eight new colleagues coming on and I have an obligation if I'm successful and my residents vote for me um, to, to do all I can to, uh, to support them and to have some stability on council because there will be a lot of tough decisions to make in a budget that will follow in November. So that's a little bit of a, a glimpse into why, I'm, uh, why I feel that, uh, that I have the expertise, I have the experience. I'm probably just as healthy as any of my other colleagues that are currently serving now. I can pretty well outrun them and outcycle them at any point in time. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. I really am. So you, you talked about two of the biggest things that the, Cal, uh, the city of Calgary is going to face over the next few years, and that is COVID-19 and the recovery from the collapse of the oil industry and businesses moving out of the city. Uh, I, I, as someone who is passionate about politics, anyone who knows me and knows the show knows that I, I like to look at websites. I like to look at candidates' websites. Now, I want to talk about Ward 13 before we look at the bigger picture of Calgary, because I think you know and I know that while you were there to represent the people of Ward 13, you also have to look at the bigger picture of the city of Calgary. So I want to talk about Ward 13 for a second. On your website, you have three pillars of your platform. And I, I love when people put it into easy to understand language that I can understand, because if I can understand it, the average person should be able to understand it as well. You talk about one of the pillars is fiscal management. Two, neighborhood safety. Three, community health and well being. When you're talking to the residents of Ward 13, are you hearing those three things at the doorstep? Are you hearing fiscal management needs to be a priority moving forward, neighborhood safety needs to be a priority, and the community well being needs to be a priority? Yes, uh, Chris, I am. Um, they're all, they're all inextricably linked they're all uh they're all sort of connected in one way or, or the other and i'll tell you what i'm most worried about i'm 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 really concerned when i hear seniors telling me that the cost of living is is out of control for them um whether it comes to user fees or whether it's coming to uh hearing uh this other resident that told me that their neighbor can't afford food uh, they're going to the store, the cost of food is going up, the cost of utilities is going up. And I'm really worried um, about um, the future of the economy, not just in Calgary or, of course, Ward 13, but um, I'm worried about the inflationary impacts that we're going to face on a go-forward basis. And, and as a nurse, I must say, I'm very, very worried about the long haulers and the long-term impact of COVID-19. And, um, and we're seeing that again, we're living that right now. So, um, so those, those things are really, really critical. So, so that on the one hand, that's sort of, you could say the doom and gloom of where we find ourselves today. Um, but on the other hand, what I've noticed is um, there's some positives that have come out of COVID. Uh, and I have never seen so many people out and about walking, cycling, um, dog walking, um, you name it, uh, out in the, in the last year, year and a half, uh, going on two years now in our outdoor spaces and places. And when I see that, and when I, when I, when I think of, you know, how we've tried to outsource some things, thinking initially that these things would be cheaper. Yeah. Uh, in actual fact, uh, it's been a problem. Uh, we've had to bring the city in in the last six months to run off some of these private contractors who haven't been doing a really good job at all. Whether it's been, you know, mowing the lawn or uh, taking out these dandelions or whether they're using a whip and snipper and it's killing the trees that are there. But people um, are expecting better and they want more investment into, uh, into these 
uh, open spaces and places, and uh, they want to share these spaces. So it's not just about cars. They want improved pathways and walkways. And, you know, when I look at the fact that in September, a few years ago during Snowtember, uh, we lost 50% of our tree canopy, people are now looking at, you know, their quality of life in Calgary and how we're going to get out of this. And it can't just be about more taxes. And it, uh, it can't be about the cost of living and inflationary costs going up. So we've got a big job to do with this council. Again, I keep referring back to this, Chris. But we've got a big job in, in, in November to look at this uh, because we can't increase taxes anymore. We cannot increase uh, user fees anymore. I mean, the one benefit in Ward 13 is that there's about two or 3,000 more acres that can be developed where you can increase the tax base, uh, so to speak. So um, that's just to touch on a few of the things that I've heard at the door and at Ward 13. And, um, uh, you know, I talk a lot about those pillars, uh, about racism and, 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 and inequality. And, um, and Ward 13 is pretty diverse. And so uh, being a human rights commissioner for 10 years, um, I want to be this voice uh, to ensure that Islamophobia and anti-Semitism and these acts of hatred and, and, and um, insensitivity in our community are not the norm. Um, and so that's why I feel my voice is needed around the table. You, I want to stick on the budget here for a second because you just mentioned it. I just want to clarify because if I've got the question, I'm assuming someone's yelling at their car radio right now listening to this or yelling at the YouTube screen saying, why didn't you follow up with this? But you talked about how Calgarians can't afford more taxes and more increases to user fees. But you know, and I know, and I think everyone who is under this God, God bless it country knows that inflation is the day of the topic of the day. Things are going up. Cost of business is going up. You, you talked about a billion dollars that you had to find savings for at the beginning of the interview. How do you ensure a low uh, cost, of in, uh, cost of living tax increase potentially when you're saying we can't afford it anymore and we've already tried to find as much savings as possible is it going back and looking for more savings or what is the priority that we need to do in the next few years so i'm really happy um i was the uh the lead uh and then um, got a number of my other counselors uh seven of the others and we took forward a notice of motion it would have been a year and a half ago um, and we actually got all of council to support our motion. And um, basically what it was about, Chris, was how do we transform government, municipal government into the 21st century? And so um, we, uh, we, were, uh, we were successful, I may say, in having Ernst and Young come in and part of the SAVE program that I talk about on my website um, to really uh, leave no stone unturned um, and that work is still underway. They were very successful actually in helping us to get some of the cuts we've had in the last two years. When I say a billion dollars out of the operating, this is a lot of money. And in some places, as I've said before, we've not only cut to the bone, we've cut to the marrow in many cases. So uh, this work is not over. They're still at work and they're bringing more of these recommendations forward coming in November. So. Um, what business should we be in at City Hall? Um, you know, we can't be all things to all people. And so we absolutely, you know, we haven't had any increases as the population has increased with our police service. We are short, in my view, about 120 police officers. And the chief, um, I'm very pleased to say, is working with other organizations uh, like AHS to start doing some of the work they should be doing and allow our police officers to be doing the work that they're supposed to do. And so it's the same with firefighters, as I've said on my platform. We are underserved when it comes to public safety and security, and especially with the firefighters, because when, when the government of Alberta pulled out 911 out of our call center, let's not forget that our firefighters are 
uh, first on scene of all 911 calls about 45 to 50 percent of the time. So those are the key core services I believe that we should be investing in. Should we be carrying the full load for affordable housing? We can't, but we want everybody to have a home. So these are some of the areas that are continuing that we need to work on. Um, we, can't, we can't be uh, uh, the cause of, of more inflation. Um, but one thing I can tell you, it's been very evident to me during this five years that market value assessment is a huge problem. It is a huge problem. It doesn't serve us well at all. To be quite frank, um, you know, um, when you have uh, decreasing property values and you have the province that really, we operate the city on a, on a 60 cent dollar, basically. There's about 40 cents of every taxpayer dollar that goes to the province. And so you're dealing with the 60 cent dollar. But we need to seriously look at market value assessment because in a recession, and in a pandemic, it doesn't serve us well at all. Uh, before we go into the next line of questions, I want to I, I want I want to thank you as a former firefighter on a rural municipality for talking about firefighter issues because I know how much they struggle and they are the first on the scene on a lot of calls, like you said. So thank you for bringing that up and greatly appreciate it. I want to go into COVID-19 for a second because it's uh, along the lines of uh, the budget as well. People are anxious. People are worried. People are living paycheck to paycheck. People are struggling financially right now across the city. And the city of Calgary is not an island on itself. It's happening across Canada. It's like happening across the world. What steps can you, as the next councillor, or the, if you are re-elected, the councillor for Ward 13 for the next four years do, to ensure everyone gets a fair shot at recovery? Because I think people right now are looking at the slate of candidates and asking the question, how are you going to help me? How are you going to continue to help me with my pocketbook to ensure that at the end of the day, I still have a roof over my head, I still have groceries on my table, and I still have access to my parks, fire service, police, and adequate snow removal, because I know that's a massive thing after last year. Yes, well, um, so people have told me that uh, they want more money, and in, in, just to pick up on your last point, that they want more invested in snow and ice removal. Uh, we need more accessibility especially with COVID-19 and the pandemic and people being uh, shuttered in their homes or when, they're, when we've had uh, the shutdown of the economy, which we needed to do, um, the only thing people could do was get outside, wear a mask, hang out with their family, but not too many family. And so um, that's where these issues of accessibility really came to the fore where, um, well, we're, this is something that municipal government must do and needs to do uh, from an accessibility point of view. Um, so snow and ice control, just to touch on that for a minute, Chris, we spend about $38 million a year on snow and ice control, but guess what? Edmonton is twice as much. I think theirs is 85 million. And so one, one percentage point of a tax increase is about 19 million, right? So just, just do the numbers there. If we're to invest heavily into snow and ice control, which we need to do, then something else has got to fall off the table, really. And, 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 and so, so that's the whole accessibility piece that we need to do a lot more on. Um, and the other thing that I feel that responsible for are, are those absolutely that you talked about just now that are more vulnerable. And uh, who, are the, who are they? Well, they're fragile seniors. Um, the majority of, of um, and women outlive men. So the majority of women that are, are, are seniors that are living on their own are women. So they have special needs. So we need to, and accessibility needs and, and just their activities of daily living, their food, their light, to keep the lights on. So if the city can't do this on their own, and, and we probably can't, we really need to align ourselves with the not-for-profit um, uh, uh, sector in, in the city of Calgary. And that's a lot of my background that, that, I, that I've had. Um, 
The other areas that I'm really focused on as a nurse, um, and I work with Mayor Nancy on this, is the whole area of mental health and addictions. Um, and if you, as you've seen on my website, I'm part of the, uh, the Harm Reduction Nurses uh, Association of Canada. Um, you know, COVID has been terrible, absolutely terrible. It's, it's still terrible. We're, we're, people are dying uh, far too frequently with this. Um, but the number of opioid deaths in this province over the last 19 months has been unbelievably terrible for families. And these are mainly young people. So this mental health and addictions piece, the accessibility of Calgarians going through this period of time, these to me are priorities. We have a plan in place for the mental health and addictions uh, that we must fund. Um, this, this, this equates to the, to the mental health, uh, the quality of life, um, improving people's function in their quality of life that we need to contribute to. And so I wanna carry on with those things. Those are the things that inspire me that also help me decide, what do I have to offer? Uh, what else do we need to do for our citizens? And that means partnering with Alberta Health Service, with uh, Canadian mental health uh, and addictions and so on and so forth. So um, uh, there's a lot there that I said that we need to work on on a go forward basis. Um, but this, this long hauler problem coming out of COVID and the impact it's going to have on our children and their mental health and well-being and why we have to move more to, um, to active play in the community and working with communities on how we can put those supports in place, whether they're for all places and ages and stages, uh, playgrounds, play fields, these sort of things. Um, I'm deeply committed to these things that are going to enhance and improve the quality of life of Calgarians. That's awesome. I, I just want to remind my listeners and to my viewers, uh, the link to uh, Councillor Diane Ur uh, Collier Urquhart's website, which is votediane.ca, is in the show notes. So if you want, I would highly recommend you go click on the link so you can go check out this, this information for yourself, because an educated voter is a great voter, in my opinion. Um, I want to turn, because I'm just cautious of time, and we're almost at the 30-minute mark, which I can't believe we're almost at the 30-minute mark, but here we are. Uh, I feel like we've only been talking for a few minutes, seconds because it's such, such a great conversation. But I want to talk now about the bigger picture. You know, I know that while, like I said, you were there to represent the people of Ward 13, you have to look at the bigger picture of Calgary. You are not there to... Uh, pit one board against the other because you have to look at, at a larger view. There are big projects that are coming up that may not financially affect or help the people of Ward 13, downtown arena, big sports field out in the Northeast here, the Green Line. Uh, people might use it, but it's not going to be in their community. How do you view yourself in your role as a councillor of balancing the needs of your constituents against the needs of the city. So you've outlined uh, and highlighted some of these mega projects that we're working on. And this is about the economic recovery of our city. We love this city. Um, we, we've been through some, through some challenging, challenging times here. And we always come back. Um, and we may have not had the challenges that we faced uh, in this last five years, and especially this last two years. Um, but, uh, but I know that, um, that when I talk to people and I'm door knocking and I have my virtual town hall meetings, um, people love the neighborhoods they live in and um, they love this city and they wanna do all they can to uphold the reputation of this city. So. I would say my number one thing um, that I'm running uh, for to have my, uh, uh, my residents in Ward 13 uh, consider to elect me is that uh, words are powerful and um, you need to be very careful that you're not going to do more that's going to impugn the reputation of our city and who we are. We need to, um, uh, and that's the reputation I have on council is uh, working with my colleagues and working with city administration. And when people, I'll never forget, um, there was a philanthropist in Calgary called Art Smith. 
And he visited uh, uh, David and I one time in our home and he said, Diane, and this was during the uh, Dave Bronconye years when Dave gave a speech at the chamber and he said, you know what, there's the A list and the B list. And, uh, and uh, there's eight of us that are on the A list and those other ones keep fighting me. And uh, Art Smith said to me, Diane, when people elect you, they expect you to go down there and do your best and get along with people and speak positively about this city. And we need leaders that have a track record of doing that now more than ever. And, um, and, and people that, uh, I'm, I've been in public service all my life, okay? Uh, maybe not all my life, but from the age of say 15, 16 on when I was volunteering, and then when I went into nursing and, and I've been nursing for 51 years and I've been a, an elected official as a public servant, respect the public service. They are doing an amazing job. I am so proud of the Calgary uh, public service, um, the, 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 the men and women and others who don't refer to themselves by those pronouns, um, to, um, to all those that are providing direct service day in and day out. I am so proud of the public service. So if you're going down to city hall and you're going down there to be at war with the public service and administration and Alberta Health Service and the other public services that serve our community. I think you're, I, I think you're, I think you're probably in the wrong business. So, so that's on a larger perspective, it's about our economy. It's about recovering. These mega projects are gonna put, put people back to work, whether it's the event center, whether it's the new arts commons, whether it's the Foothills Athletic Park, um, whether it's uh, the green line that's so important for the future of our city. This says a lot about Calgary and that we're coming back and that we're gonna be stronger than ever. And the leadership at City Hall really, really is important to contribute to making that happen. I appreciate that. And I, I, I echo your sentiments that sometimes diplomacy is the best result and going down and picking a fight with uh, people is not the best way to get things done. So I echo that sentiment, uh, Councillor. Um, I just want to be cautious of time because I, I, I know you have other things. We're in the midst of a campaign. Do you want to get out door knocking? Um, I want to turn now to October 19th. October 19th, you are re-elected. So October 18th is the election day. For those who are wondering, get out and vote. Uh, but October 19th, you are re-elected for this uh, Ward 13. What is priority number one on October 19th for you? Uh, the, the first thing I will do is to thank everybody um, because this has been a very polarizing time. Um, social media uh, provides some very positive things, but um, some pretty negative things can be said about other people. Um, so um, it will be to thank the residents of Ward 13 for, for having the confidence to send me back down to City Hall to be their voice at City Hall. Um, I have my platform. I, I consulted a lot on this platform with my residents of Ward 13 and city uh, leadership. Uh, whether it was the chief of police or our fire department or our city manager, um, I, I, uh, I will be meeting with them and saying, okay, you know, the citizens looked at my platform, they heard me speak, they attended town hall meetings, I met them on the doorstep, this is what they want to see. Um, um, what are the next steps that I need to take in order to execute on these things? For example, the plebiscite on, floor, on fluoridation. One of the biggest learnings I had in my political career was it was in 2011 and it was at 9.30 at night and Councillor Farrell and Jim Stevenson came over to my chair and they said, you don't mind if we take out fluoride or the water, do you? And um, we didn't have any evidence at that time that it was important to keep it in there. So I said, okay. So like that, with no public consultation, uh, the decision was made in the darkness of night practically and out it came. And so I made a commitment after that to say that um, we need to have more research done on this. So I made a commitment to do that. I worked with the O'Brien Institute. They did a major study 
uh, of all of the research pros and cons that were out there. They agreed to do the work for nothing. They came back with their report and the report showed that this would be in the best interest of Calgarians to add this back into the water. There was no, there weren't the votes on council to do this. So I have made a commitment. Please Calgarians, get out and vote on, on, on October 18th. And, uh, and if you do, and if you vote to, to uh, bring in fluoridation again, on October 19th, I will be submitting a notice of motion directing administration uh, to uh, reintroduce fluoride back into the water to protect our children. Amen to that. I, I, I want to ask the question because you brought it up and I wasn't going to ask this question, but uh, you brought up the issue around plebiscites. The city of Calgary likes to go to the city uh, residents for their, uh, their feedback whether it be the, the Calgary Olympic bid in uh, a few years ago, whether it be fluoride. Um, I, I'm playing devil's advocate here and I, I like playing devil's advocate on these type of questions is we elect councillors to make the decision. We, we want councillors to make the decision and sometimes they may not be the most, uh, uh, the, the, the most agreeable decisions. At the end of the day, we have elected you to make those decisions. In a world, in a time of fiscal management, of fiscal responsibility, do you see the need of plebiscites still today? Because people are looking at this and going, it's going to cost us money for this plebiscite. It's going to cost us money to do this over again. This is an issue around fluoride. We have had two votes on this in the 90s and the 80s, and we took it out. Now we're bringing it back. And at what point do we have to say, counselors, just make a decision? Yeah, uh, the uh, living in the states, uh, we couldn't vote, but there were a number of initiatives that were always on these ballots. Oh my goodness, they they would go up both arms. Um, I feel like that's the mayor's uh, ballot this year. <laughs> I think so. I think so, Chris. Uh, but uh, this all kind of started for me uh, when um, when uh, Premier Kenny was elected uh, two years ago. And he was starting to, he was going on and on about equalization. And I thought, well, you know what, you know what, Premier Kenny, and I wrote an editorial in the Herald, uh, and hopefully it's posted on my website, uh, the counselor Diane.ca, I know it's there. Uh, but I said, you know, uh, and it was an open letter that I wrote to him uh, two years ago saying, you know, we've got a problem with equalization as well. You know, uh, granted, we have an equalization with, uh, problem with Ottawa, but please, you know, you decrease corporate taxes by 1% over a couple of years. Um, you know, please, you know, just back out of this education requisition. We send about $700 million a year to, to Edmonton uh, from taxpayer dollars that we could be running the city on. Uh, and you have other sources of revenue, like uh, the oil and gas revenues, even though they're diminishing, but the price of oil is going up again. Uh, and so, you know, I, this was the argument I was making with him. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a quid pro quo. You want, you want uh, equalization with Ottawa, we want equalization with Edmonton. And so we teetered around with, well, let's put a plebiscite question on. If he's going to put a plebiscite question on, <laughs> well, let, uh, let us do it as well. And that's a double-edged sword, because what if the answer to his, his plebiscite question is no? Um, so, and then he's throwing another one on there about Senate, Senate, uh, Senate and you know, daylight savings time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, um, I am, I'm not going to go there provincially on, on what that's about. Um, but I do know that my council colleague, uh, Councillor Chahal, he initiated bringing this plebiscite forward again. For, uh, and that's when he hadn't anticipated to run federally, and I'm and I'm thrilled that he's going to be there and represent us. Um, but we still didn't have enough votes to do it on our own. Uh, we didn't. Maybe this new council we will. But I'm holding all those that are running for for office that if the people of Calgary are going to support this plebiscite for fluoride to be re reintroduced into the water, that you better make a commitment that you're going to vote to put it back in. Or likewise, if it's if it's opposed to it, that's fine. And so, Chris, you know, the, the full-blown response to your question, 
we make thousands and thousands of big decisions, small decisions, and something in between as elected officials um, day in and day out down at City Hall. And then once every four years, these things get thrown on a ballot. I think it's more um, uh, being a little bit more politically promiscuous in a way, you know, to, to see if, it, if there's something that will catch on. Uh, but there's a lot that goes on in between elections that really plebiscites, I agree, we're there to make the tough decisions and I'm more than happy to make them. Good for you. Um, I want you to take a few minutes right now uh, look at the camera, talk to the people of Ward 13 who are listening to this episode, listen to this podcast, listen to uh, watching this video. Why should you be reelected for city council for the uh, great ward of Ward 13? To the uh, residents of Ward 13, this election is consequential. It is probably the most important election that I have offered myself to serve. The time is now, we need to recover, we need to rebuild, and we need to reinvest. And I am asking for your vote uh, in this consequential election to represent you at City Hall, to be professional, to look at my track record, to see how I get along with other people, to see how I work with other people to get stuff done. When you go down there, you are only one voice. And if you don't have a record of working together with people, of respecting people, of listening to people, of trying to make their life better, then that is not what we need right now. We need people with a track record that have demonstrated that they can do all of those things as a volunteer, as a professional registered nurse, and as someone that has served you and all the citizens of Calgary for 21 years. Thank you. Councillor, uh, I wanna thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honor and a pleasure. Um, for my listeners and to my viewers, uh, like I said, if you are yelling at my screen asking, why didn't you ask this question? Why didn't you ask this question? I say this, it's my show. I get to ask the questions, but also at the same time, if you have a question for counselor or uh, Collier Urquhart, show notes, click on the Facebook, click on Twitter, click on website, submit your questions to her directly. Um, counselor, I, I, I say this all the time, but I'm going to say this to you uh, sincerely. Good luck. Good luck on October 18th. Uh, we have a very important election ahead of us and we need people who are gonna best represent our values and our morals. And I wish you the best of luck on October 18th. Um, to my listeners and to my viewers, get out and vote. Do not complain on social media. <laughs> Do not complain that you're, you didn't vote so my voice doesn't matter. Get out, educate yourself and vote. Counselor, thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure.